So thank you for joining if you are online. Um, the re webinar is being recorded, so we are going to be sharing this um, afterwards. So um, we we'll share this on social media and by, and by email afterwards and also putting it on YouTube. So welcome to our webinar to share, share plans and ideas for the development of Heartcliffe BMX Club. So the development of this track was completed before lockdown um, and it's a really, really good facility for the local community. Um, it unfortunately isn't officially open yet, but as restrictions are lifting, we're hoping, hoping that we can launch the track and club soon. Um, so we thought it was a really good time to share some plans and ideas for the club's club in more detail and hopefully answer any questions that you may have. So a bit of the plan for today is that Asli and I are going to deliver a presentation, just giving you some further information. Um, all attendees, um, only panellists, sorry, have video and audio function. Um, so if you're watching this, you don't have video or audio function, but you can ask questions throughout using the Q&A function. So Steph is going to be monitoring this throughout the webinar and we'll pause at certain points throughout the presentation. If there are any questions, um, you can send these either directly to Steph or through the Q&A function. I would recommend you have this open on the side of the screen. Um, there may be some questions that we cannot answer straight away today. If this is the case, we'll make sure that we follow up with these via email after the meeting. As I said at the start, we are recording this webinar so we can share it further afield afterwards um, via email and on social media. So some, just quick, some, some quick introductions. Um, my name is Lucy Fisher. I'm a development manager at Access Sport on the Making Tracks programme here in Bristol. So I've been working on this Heartcliffe project for, for a little time, little while now and, and looking forward to it to it's getting launched soon um, and over to Asli. Hi everyone thank you for joining us today my name is Asli and I am a British cycling BMX coach and I work with Access Sport and Lucy in Bristol and I deliver the coaching aspect of the outreach and help with uh, club sessions at the track which you'll hear more about later um, but yeah I'm involved in a lot of the delivery side of things for the club and outreach. And Steph? Yep hi everyone um, my name is Steph um, and I'm the project um, delivery manager for the Making Tracks team up in London um, so I work kind of mainly on our outreach program that you're going to hear about later um, but also work closely with Lucy so that projects are kind of consistent across um, London and Bristol. So I'll just do a brief introduction to Access Sport if you don't know about the charity at all. Um, so Access Sport is a sport inclusion charity that aims to put inclusion at the, part of, at the heart of community sport. We believe that no one should be excluded from the transformational benefits that sport can bring. As a charity, we strive for there to be a level playing field so that everyone, regardless of ability or background, can take part in sport and physical activity. So we work primarily in London, Bristol, Manchester and Oxford across four key programmes. The Making Tracks programme, which is the one we're going to be speaking about today. The Disability Inclusion programme, the Social Inclusion programme and the Team 100 Volunteer Inclusion programme. So to help in achieve inclusion in sport, um, Access Sport train, educate, equip and support local volunteers and the community sports organisations so they can grow become sustainable and include and develop disabled children and young people in physical activity. Unleashing the potential of community sports organisations to reach more disabled and disadvantaged young people whilst developing and strengthening, strengthening their local communities. So a little bit more about the Making Tracks programme, which is um, the key programme here today. So our mission is to normalise youth inclusion and diversity in cycling to support people from typically underrepresented groups to kickstart a lifelong love of cycling for sport, recreation and travel. And we want our work to act as a beacon to inspire others and to create a national movement for change. So we do this by developing inclusive community cycling hubs. Um, and this can be split into three, three key sections. So we develop and build new community cycling facilities in deprived, more deprived areas in, in cities. Um, and we call these hubs. We develop community cycling clubs on these facilities by recruiting and training a workforce of coaches, volunteers and young leaders. 
And we also have a community outreach programme where we deliver cycling directly to young people in schools and community groups. So I'll just briefly touch on why we, we are working in Bristol. Um, there's quite a few stats on here, so I won't, I won't read all of them, but I'll just pick out a few that I think are quite important. So Bristol is one of the 10 core cities in the UK and is the 10th largest. It has 41 areas that are in the most deprived 10% in England, including three in the bottom 1%. 26 of Bristolians ride a bike at least weekly, but this drops to 20% in the most deprived areas. And this could be due to several factors, less cycle routes, limited access to bikes, maybe not the ability to, to learn how to ride. And hopefully this is just a statistics we can change through our Making Tracks programme. So the Making Tracks goals in Bristol, um, we hope to develop five new bike tracks or hubs in five key areas of Bristol. So we've already developed three tracks so far in Lawrence Western, Hillfields and Harcliffe. All open access facilities, all completely different. And so hopefully we can engage a lot of young people on these facilities. Um, we have developed two sustainable community bike clubs so far in Lawrence Western and Hillfields and hopefully Harcliffe soon. Aiming to introduce 5,000 disadvantaged and disabled young people into cycling. We have a key focus on engaging more underrepresented groups such as women and girls, BME, disability, those who are physically inactive, those with long and those with long-term health conditions and non-riders. We also look to recruit um, club volunteers and help us to help develop sustainable clubs. Um, as well as upskilling coaches as well to coach at the clubs and to deliver outreach at local schools and community groups. Um, and we'll touch on these a little bit more later. Um, the, our main aim is to increase inclusivity and accessibility to cycling in Bristol. So why do we pick Harcliffe as our third site? Um, there's quite a few reasons, but I'll, I've picked out a few here that I think are probably the most important. Um, prior to the development of the community track, um, there was little to no accessible or inclusive cycling opportunities in Harcliffe. Only 5% of the community ride a bike at least once a week. Um, and if you heard in my previous, previous statistic, the Bristol average is 26%, so there's quite a drop there. The track itself is based near the Malago Greenway cycling path, which links this links Harcliffe to the city centre. So hopefully we can increase confidence to get people to utilise this cycle path. And there's also, even though there is a cycle path, there are limited places to learn to ride and to increase that cycling confidence to utilise that. Um, interestingly though, Harcliffe is one of the lowest ward, is a ward with, the, with less car ownership in the city. <laughs> Sorry, I messed my words up there. Um, so lowest car ownership in the city, um, which is quite interesting because we hope that more people will be cycling. Um, a few of the statistics are 69% feel that antisocial behaviour is a problem locally compared to the Bristol average of 33%. Um, it is well known that increasing activity and providing new opportunities is a positive way to combat antisocial behaviour and to um, increase opportunities for upskilling for young people. Um, there's also limited youth provision and physical activity opportunities in the local area. These are increasing, which is really good to see, and hopefully we can add to this with a community club and community outreach. So just a little bit about the pump track, which some of you may have seen already across social media or in person. Um, like I said, we're hoping to launch this over the coming months. Um, it has it is a really great facility for all ages and abilities. Um, it's an inclusive and accessible pump track. So it's a loop track with a starting platform near the container. There's a variety of jumps, rollers and berms and multiple routes to encourage everyone to ride. The facility is all tarmac, um, which means there's little maintenance, um, largely maintenance free um, and accessible for all wheels, such as bikes, scooters, skateboards, um, and also being tarmac means that it's bit, it is easier for all abilities. So children can roll down there on balanced bikes 
and as well as BMX bikes and mountain bikes being used as well. The facility is fenced but is open access and free, free to use. Um, it's designed mainly for BMX and mountain bikes but as I said suitable for scooters and skateboards and not for motorbikes. Um, the tight burns make it difficult for motorbikes to ride a track. We've had experience for this from other facilities and also as it is fenced the gates on there make it much more difficult for motorbikes or mopeds to access the facility due to the A-frame. Um, some other amenities on site, we've got a site safe storage facility, which has all the necessary, necessary equipment for the community club, such as helmets, bikes, maintenance equipment, and, and things like that, which we'll touch on a little bit more later, as well as signage, um, a living roof on the container, and also traffic counters at each entrance. So traffic counters monitor the informal use of the track, so we can see how track has reached people in the community, as well as alongside those structured, ses structured sessions that we will be running. Um, so activation of the pump track is, is quite an important part of the Making Tracks programme. So there's a few strands that we look at doing. So promoting the facility to be accessible for everyone, all ages and abilities, and encouraging the local community to utilise this in their own time, as well as during the structured sessions. Forming a community bike collective that will work together to activate and look after the facility. Developing a community cycling club um, named Hartcliffe BMX Club. Um, inviting local schools and community organisations to take part in our outreach programme as well as inviting other cycling providers and local organisations to, to use the facility for their project delivery, which we've experienced at other, other tracks, which has gone worked really well. And it's great to see that lots of people use the facility besides us and the club. I'm just going to quickly touch on the bike collective and then we'll, we'll stop for some questions because I feel like I've been speaking for a while. Um, so the community bike collective is something that we're really interested in implementing in Harcliffe. Um, so it, it basically is a group of local stakeholders who work together to activate, support and take care of the community bike hub as well as the club and ensures that the facility and hub benefits the whole community. So it encouraging, encourages recreational use as well as used by the club. Anyone can be part of this, any local group, organisation, business or individual that has an interest in creating a sustainable facility for the local community and delivering accessible and inclusive activities. Cycling experience isn't necessary, just a passion for increasing opportunities, particularly physical activity opportunities for the local community. And the, the collective aims to support the growth and the development of the community facility and the community club. We'll pause here in case there are any questions. Um, is the track suitable for complete beginners or those of low riding ability? Uh, yeah, so as it's an all time at facility, um, it is suitable for all ages and abilities. Um, we would encourage everyone to give it a go. So we've had sessions before where you've had children on balance bikes going around the track as well as more confident riders on, on BMX bikes. So yeah, we would encourage anyone of any ability or any riding ability to get down onto the, onto the track. Cool, and then just um, how will you encourage other people to use the track or advertise the track? So we'll look to advertise the track um, on social media, mainly. So we are looking at doing a launch video for it to showcase how accessible it is and how inclusive it is for everyone, um, ranging from children using it to experts, um, women and girls and disabilities. So hopefully that can showcase how important this facility, facility can be for the community. And to encourage, um, we're looking at running a range of sessions on the track, which we'll touch on a bit later, um, as well as in the track being on a cycle path, hopefully we'll encourage more people to walk and cycle to utilise it, as well as encouraging the local community. Well, that's all I got for the moment. So if anyone does have any more questions, please pop them in the Q&A feature. Cool. So just touch, go on to the, 
talk about the BMX club, um, which is kind of our focus over the next coming months is the act activation of the BMX club. So hopefully we will be developing and launching this soon. Um, it will be, we're looking to develop a sustainable community cycling club based at Hartcliffe Pump Track called Hartcliffe BMX Club. As you can see, we have a logo created already. Um, this was created by some young people last summer um, down in Hartcliffe. We ran some taster sessions and asked for their opinions on the logo, um, which is great. And I hope you like it. Um, the club itself will be running regular sessions um, led by local volunteers and helpers with the aim to create a key resource for the local community. Some example sessions will be weekend sessions, wing cycling sessions, which are inclusive BMX and BMX size, which is our female BMX, um, which we'll touch on a little bit more, go into a bit more detail about these later. All necessary equipment is supplied. So bikes and helmets and stored in the site safe container on site. Um, so if you've been down to the track, you would have seen this container. The reason why we supply equipment is to try and remove as many barriers as possible for, for participants, especially those that may not own their own bike or may not have the confidence to ride a BMX bike. Yeah, we can su supply the equipment and also the support in learning how to ride. Sessions will cost a small fee of around two pounds. Um, this is to help the club become sustainable. Um, first session will be free, so people can try out and see if they see if they like it. But the two pounds will go back into the club to help pay for things such as maintenance for the bikes um, or other equipment that might be needed to keep the club going. The club will also look to do some basic facility maintenance, such as litter picking and sweeping of the track. And we'll also look to promote the club and facility to the local community to encourage people to come down and utilise a track in their own time, but also during the club sessions as well. Asli, I think it's up to you, over to you now. OK, so, yeah, I'm going to go through um, the BMX club helper roles. So we thought we often refer to our volunteers as helpers as well um, and club life isn't all just about coaching um, you need a lot more people than just coaches um, to run a club so a couple of the roles here I'll go through so overseers um, their input is other than just on the ground involvement in cycling and events and maintenance activities so this could be someone who will manage the bank account for the club or a neighbourhood watch representative who can help with any antisocial behaviour or just keeping an eye on the safety of the track. Um, someone who may also just want to manage the social media presence of the club and they may not want to come down to the club every week and be on the track but they're more than happy to help from home or do kind of admin roles bits and bobs like that so that's like an overseer and they have a key part to play in in the BMX club. So key holders are individuals or organisations or service providers um, who hold a key and have access to the equipment store at the hub. Other organisations with access to the facility and equipment will help create this hub that we've we've referenced, which is where a collective of organisations work together. Um, and then general helpers individuals who offer their time and assist with the running of club sessions, just handing out bikes, registration of new participants, um, engaging with parents and children during sessions, people who will just spread the word about the club and the programme, um, and this can be in an ad hoc basis or on a regular basis. Helpers also include our wings buddies, so we will touch on our wing sessions later and what they are and what they're all about but these wings buddies can help our riders just integrate into club and give them any one-to-one -one support during a session should they need it and then we have technical helpers so these are people with uh, bike specific skills or coaching um, and these people can help with the maintenance of the bikes or maintenance of the track and um, at this point, it's very important to say that we are all for upskilling 
um, our volunteers and helpers and there's lots of opportunities available to expand your own skills so whether this be with coaching courses first aid bike maintenance um, diversity and inclusion training we value our volunteers and helpers so we want to offer them the opportunity to expand their own skill set um, in any way they feel they could benefit the club further and we also like to try and engage younger volunteers and helpers into club life and running of a club um, so we run or we will run uh, awards for young volunteers which is run through British Cycling but it gives young people the opportunity to get involved in club life in any of the roles that I've just mentioned above and they receive recognition and um, awards for their time volunteered with the club so yeah something really good we'd like to engage not just adult helpers and volunteers but young people and volunteers as well and we're going to move on to the next slide which is a quote from one of our helpers so this is from one of our club helpers. I'm just gonna give you a little bit of time to read it. Okay, so hopefully you've managed to read that, but that's one of our helpers and volunteers and she is great helping at Hillfields. So the value of the volunteer. So it's really important to never underestimate the power and the impact you can have on a young person by simply being an enabler by being that person who just welcomes them to the club hands them that bike and gives them that opportunity to get involved could make a huge difference to their life and their future so our volunteers across the making tracks network all play a key part in enabling young people to access sport and as i said this could really shape their next steps uh, we want to empower our volunteers to be confident in making decisions for the club. So as we've said, we, we kind of build it, we implement everything that a club needs to get going, and then we are really keen to empower our helpers and volunteers to make the decisions on the next steps on how to expand, how to expand and create a hub um, where lots of different organisations will use the facility. Um, we're, we're always there for support, but ultimately we'd like our volunteers and helpers to be able to make those decisions for the club. And there's a little quote there to inspire you. And then we'll go on to, we've got a couple more slides and then we'll pause for some questions. So example sessions that can be run at the facility. So weekend club sessions, when sessions get busy, we advise to split them into beginner and intermediate. Um, abilities and this just helps the coach or the volunteers deliver um, a good session that caters for everyone um, and it makes make sure everyone can kind, kind of get the coaching that they need after school sessions so we do a lot of outreach which we'll hear about later with the local schools and sometimes schools would like a specific session for their school for an after school club so any local schools to the club we can facilitate this and this also includes girls only sessions as well. We understand it may be a bit of a daunting place for girls to come and try the BMX uh, track. So having a girls only session is a really good way to uh, get them involved. And BMX exercise. So BMX exercise is an initiative to engage women age 16 and over into BMXing. Females are highly underrepresented within this sport and this is a fun friendly relaxed nature of bmx and it's a great way to just meet new people um, try new things and engage in a new fitness modality we have some great successes with the uh, women who have been involved in bmx exercise um, they've come from not knowing much about the sport and then they've eventually maybe even given racing a go or they just come along and turn up week on week to escape the stresses of daily life if you'd like to know more about bmx exercise we have a BM exercise week next week, so follow that on social media. Uh, and then our wing sessions. So we mentioned this earlier. So our wing sessions are disability inclusion sessions for anyone with a physical impairment or additional need. Um, so not all riders have to attend a wing specific session. They may start in a wing session and progress and feel comfortable to attend 
the Saturday club sessions or just normal club sessions. And this is where our wings buddies will come in handy because they can just keep an eye out for that rider and make sure that they are safe and welcome at all sessions. Um, it's important to get to know your riders and their needs. So as, as a club, you can cater for anything that they might need. And we're always here to support if you need any assistance. So if you'd like further upskilling on disability and inclusion and how to coach, then we can provide courses for you. Um, and races and events, this is something we haven't quite done at some of the clubs yet, but it's something we're keen to do. So you could run um, like a charity fundraiser event for your club or time trial races for your riders to just get a taste of racing. It might not be for everyone, but it might just give them something else to think about. Um, and this is also another good way to engage your young volunteers in event organisation and things that they might need to think about. And it's really good opportunity for those young people to gain some some key um, life skills in helping organise such events. So again, we we would be very open to volunteers and uh, coaches alike organising events and we would support where we can. Uh, we're just going to pause here for any questions. So, Steph, any questions on the Q&A? Yep, we've had a, a few come in. Um, are all on-site staff going to have, um, I guess it's basically D, DBS, CRB checks? Yep, so we require all of our staff to have those. We can um, get those for you or help help you attain those or I believe if you've already got your own, we will just need to take a copy of it. Um, will there be a charge to local organisations or schools to book a group session with coaches available? Lucy, over to you on this one. Uh, if it's a local organisation, then no, we probably wouldn't charge you. Um, it is dependent on organisation or, or group, but um, if it, we would want to try and engage as many young people in the Hark of area, so we'd probably, um, yeah, do it free of charge. If, um, yeah, free of charge, I'll go with. Um, if you have a group that you've got in mind, please get in contact with me and um, we can discuss logistics and, and more specific details as well. Um, my contact details will be at the end. Um, but yeah, we try, try and run as many um, of our sessions free of charge. I think just to, to add to what Lucy just said, um, our funding obviously covers underrepresented groups. So as long as um, the groups that you um, want to bring to the sessions kind of fit into one of the categories, if it's a disability group or um, kind of a group from um, low income families or something like that, then yeah, that is something that we can support. Um, we kind of only charge when um, it doesn't quite fit into our funding. So um, yeah, as long as you can support one of those um, groups, then yeah, we can fund them. Um, how do you encourage local people to volunteer or help out? So um, through things like this webinar and we are also running a kind of helper volunteer workshop um, at the end of this month which the details are later in the uh, slideshow and that goes into more depth about the roles available, what you can get out of it, um, and that's not just a webinar, as I said, it's a workshop. So we will be discuss discussing session scenarios, how you could reach out to other organizations. Um, and even if you come along and you're not sure if you have a role to play within a club, there's no, um, no kind of commitment. It's just to find out a bit more, start having conversations with the local people and organizations. Um, so even if you're not from a BMX or cycling background, but you want to do something for your local community, I would urge you to come along to that workshop and just have a conversation with us. Yeah, and on that as well, um, we will be sharing opportunities with local organisations in Harkliff and Witherwood and sharing opportunities on social media as well. So there's hopefully be plenty of ways that you can get involved. And we will also be putting a banner up beside the track, which is a a way that we've engaged local volunteers before so hopefully that will do the same again. Um, this one kind of follows on from that. If I'm interested in volunteering how do I get involved? 
Yeah, so either contact ASIRI via email, um, so our emails will be shared afterwards or at the end of the presentation, um, or follow Harkliff BMX Club on Facebook and message directly on there. Um, and we'll continue, we'll be continuing sharing our contact details via social media or email over the coming months. Um, so that would be the best way to get um, to learn more about the volunteering roles that are available. Cool. And then last one is, um, what is the permitted set? Uh, what is the permitted safe numbers allowed on the site at one time, and how will this be monitored? Well, at the moment, um, with the pandemic, in a coaching session, you're only allowed five participants. Um, so, if an organised coaching session was to go ahead, we would be following the government guidelines and then British Cycling National Governing Body guidelines for that um, the best practice in that situation if you are coaching and it's obviously uh, an open access track and members of the public are using the track is just to inform those members that you are running a session and to adhere to social distance guidelines um, in terms of outside of the current situation um, it's i would say uh, it's kind of down to the coach and the volunteers to deem what's safe and make sure everyone's riding safely. Um, Lucy, I don't know if there's an official number. Probably not an official number, um, bar the fact that I think you're only qualified to take up to 20 young people in per session as a coach or volunteer. Um, on the track itself, you wouldn't have that many, that number of people riding at one time, just due to the size of it. So riding at one time on a facility, um, a Harkless size might be five to six at one time. Um, and then as there is that large uh, starting platform, it means that you can have breaks in between and you can rotate who's riding um, quite regularly. So that means that you can have a, a good size group riding as well as having the track used by um, members of the public as well, which is why a facility like this is, is brilliant. Cool. Um, all right, we'll just move on to the, the next section, which is about our outreach programme. So we've touched on it briefly um, throughout this presentation so far, but alongside the facility and club development, um, we deliver a 12 week outreach programme um, to the local area. Um, this can be to primary schools, secondary schools, pre referral units, special education new schools, community groups and youth groups. Um, so we're quite open to kind of all the groups that we work with. Um, we do aim to work with those groups that are closest to the facility to begin with, especially for those that can walk to the site or meet on site. Um, and then we do have capacity to, to push that out as well to schools that are further afield. So secondary schools and SEN schools and pupil referrals are more likely to have own minibuses so they can travel a bit further, whereas primary schools that isn't the case. Um, so that's why we focus on schools that are closer to the site. So the programme delivers BMX and cycling to those more underrepresented groups that we've touched on quite um, throughout this presentation. So girls and um, girls, those who are physically inactive, um, non-riders, non-confident riders, those with disability, BME, those from lower socio-economic backgrounds as well. And the programme includes basic cycling competences, specific BMX skills, introduction to bike maintenance, introduction to strength conditioning, um, in increasing the competence on the BMX track and um, skills on the BMX track, as well as personal development skills, skills such as leadership and confidence. So the direct delivery of outreach, which is where I come in and what I do. So, at the start of the first 12, at the start of the 12 weeks, I always assess the needs of the group and their ability. And if needs be, I will split them so I can give um, further coaching to those who need it. And it's just more focused approach. Um, lots of children lack confidence in basic bike skills. So we always try to build these into sessions, um, stopping safely, cornering safely, general bike handling and kind of building up that confidence. Um, children tend to work in groups of twos or threes and this is really good for their relationship and uh, communication skills. Um, if they have a problem in their groups they are encouraged to try and overcome that um, 
within their group and also I tend to pair or group up children who may be more confident so that they can help those that are less confident um, and that has a real success it's really good to see children's confidence in their own kind of ability to help each other so that's really nice to see children are also encouraged to visit the track for a half term session so we always run um, half term sessions or summer sessions and we kind of promote these into the schools that that we work with and we also encourage that school if they can to make a track visit part of their session part of one of the 12 weeks um, and all the skills that I teach in the school whether that be at the playground or at the track are always related to that track so that track visit is always booked in as, as quickly as we can so I can relate all the skills that we're teaching them on the flat to the track and it's a really good way to kind of excite them about um, the progression that they can make and the opportunity to ride um, the local track and all of our schools are invited to the annual school games um, which is an inter-schools competition and this is just a really great way to see their progression to let them cheer each other on and have have a go at a fun friendly competition in a safe environment so uh, we're going to pause there for any further questions and then i'll go through kind of the next steps following this presentation so steph any further questions um if i'm interested how do i get my school or group involved in the outreach program you drop us an email uh, so our emails will be at the end um and obviously for september we will need to think our delivery through very thoroughly um, just follow the government and national governing body guidelines but our email will be at the end um is the outreach program aimed at all ages so um due to the size of the bikes we tend to take children from year five upwards um and go through kind of all through secondary school we have taken slightly younger groups of children but as I said just due to the size of the bikes it would be unsafe for really really young children to try and ride the bigger bikes but there's no reason with the smaller bikes that younger children can't come along to club sessions um, where will the training be held the training in terms of I guess that like the outreach program like where where does the outreach program take place so it normally takes place in the school if possible um the, if the school can possibly come to their local track that is the ideal situation as it gets the children on the track um but if that's not possible we will hold it in their playground as long as they've got kind of suitable space to do so we do work in some smaller playgrounds so most playgrounds are suitable um but we can always come and have a visit and just assess it beforehand um, and then just lastly how have you adapted your outreach program with the new restrictions so yeah that's something we are working hard on and making sure we can deliver this for september so as said at the moment the current guidance guidance is one coach to five children um, we will have risk assessments in place to mitigate transmission of infection we will have uh, lots of cleaning products on board so i make sure i will clean all of the kit before and after um, we will look into ways that participants may be able to have their own kit or own helmet um, one thing in coaching sessions at the moment is if children do have their own kit they are encouraged to use it as long as it is safe to do so um, we need to be flexible in case any of the government guidance or british cycling guidance changes so we are prepared to adapt quickly where necessary but this will have to be discussed with the schools and we'll make sure that we follow any procedures that the schools have in place as well that's all the questions for the moment cool so next steps um so yep yeah, we are recruiting volunteers and helpers for the community club um so if you are interested please get in touch via the facebook page or our emails are on the last slide so do drop myself or lucy an email um 
and if you are keen to help please try and sign up for our volunteers workshop which is at the end of july that's the 28th of july so that'll be an interactive workshop so we'll deliver some slides as we've done today and then we'll hopefully split into groups and have open discussions about session scenarios what you could do to help um, and if you know any young people that would like to get involved from the age of 14 to 18 we have a young leaders workshop um, on the 30th of july so again drop us an email um, if you are an organization and want to express interest in being part of the community bike collective let us know um, we are doing other things during this time so we are running a regular saturday hit session which you can you and your families can do at home um, and that is shared on the Access Sport Facebook page and we'll share that to the Heartcliffe BMX page as well. So if you'd like to just come and get to know some other people in the BMX network, in our club's network, it's great, great little Saturday um, fitness session to come along to. We also have online fitness videos for cyclists on the Access Sport YouTube page. Um, yeah, make sure you go and like the BMX page on Facebook and hopefully in the not too distant future we can launch Harkliff Bike Hub and BMX Club. Yeah just to add to a couple of things that you just said we'll be sharing the details for the, the workshops tomorrow via social media and also via email um, so keep an eye out for those and as I mentioned earlier we'll keep an keep an eye out for when we can launch the, the hub and the club um, but we are going to looking at doing a promotion promotional video for it um, to showcase um, kind of how accessible it is for everyone and how everyone can use it so if you would like to be involved or interviewed more than welcome um, and we'll be sharing um, maybe a bit of a call to action for that at some point um, over the coming weeks and um, was that one more question that just came in there Steph? Yeah I think it was just to clarify where the workshops are taking place I think they're on online aren't they? Yeah, so the workshops will be on Zoom, um, not on the webinar section, on the meetings function so we can chat through with everyone. Um, the sign up form will be shared tomorrow with um, all the further information. Um, but if you do have any questions about that, please drop myself or Asley an email and we can answer any further questions. Cool. Well, thank you for those who joined um, today. Um, really great to to chat this through and to share our plans and ideas for developing Heartcliff BMX Club and we're really excited to get it launched and, and up and running and delivering cycling to the community of Heartcliff and Withywood. Um, if you do have any further questions please get in contact with Asley or myself um, our contact details are on screen right now. Um, I will also share the presentation and also the recording after this today and um, later this week so this can be shared with anyone else you think might be interested in getting part, taking part in Heartcliff BMX Club um, or if anyone's got any further questions they can hopefully listen back and, and have those questions answered. Um, I'll also share the, the question and answers um, from today as well so you've got those um, via email. Um, yeah, like I said, thank you again for, for joining um, us three on, on here today um, and we look forward to having Hartcliffe Beer Match Club launched in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.